Hey everybody, my name is Jason and welcome to the home studio. Today we're going to be checking out an awesome part of Babylon, something that's really powerful. It's called the raw texture. Specifically, what we're going to be doing is generating procedural noise or random noise, and then we're going to create a raw texture based on that noise, pipe that into a node material, and then use that to create procedurally generated terrain cubes. That's right. It's so awesome and so powerful. There's tons you can do with it. Let's dive right on in. So here we have it. Here is a terrain cube, and I'm going to walk you through at a pretty high level what I did to create this, okay? We're not going to go through step by step and go through absolutely all the code, but I'll give you kind of the basic steps of what I did to create this. All right, so the very, very first thing is we create a background color and an arc rotate camera so we can kind of move around. Uh, I'm going to create a directional light here. And then we're going to get into some of the noise. Now, let's pause for a moment and let me tell you, this is not a demo about how to create random noise. However, I did use the diamond square algorithm, and I'll put a link down in the description down below to this Wikipedia article. I used the diamond square algorithm to, to do my procedural noise, okay? Um, and this was an algorithm that was first introduced in 1982 at SIGGRAPH. It's really, really popular in the CG world. It's not too complicated. It's not perfect by any means, but um, it's not too complicated and definitely something you can check out at the highest, highest possible level of an explanation. You take a grid of pixels and you basically set the outside corners and then you kind of look at their midpoint and you say, hey, I'm going to create, a, oh, excuse me, you take the outside corners. You set a random value on those, and then you take their midpoint and say, okay, I want a new random value for that, but I want it to be influenced by the values on the outside. And then you go through step by step. There's a diamond step and a square step, and you recursively go through everything until your entire grid of pixels has a value between zero and one. That essentially is the steps for the diamond square algorithm. And when we're all done, you end up with... Uh, raw texture that ends up looking something like that. So let's go through and see that. So again, we're not going to go through all the steps to create procedural noise, but this is here the step that does that, okay? I'm going to say a new variable, noise array, is going to be diamond square, and I'm going to pass in a resolution, uh, and then I'm going to pass in a multiplier. Now the resolution is basically just, uh, I'm taking um, the, I want a resolution of 512 by 512, and then I need that to be uh, multiplied by two, so 512 times two plus one. So it needs to be 2n, uh, as it mentions here in the article, uh, 2n plus 1 so that it ends up as an odd value. And so that's what uh, I'm doing here with resolution. And multiplier, you don't need to worry about. That is something that we use if you want to change the influence uh, for the random values, basically kind of change the range, okay? Uh, and so this diamond square uh, method, let's jump down to that, is here. Again, we're not going to go through this whole thing, but essentially what I'm doing is creating uh, a grid of values. I'm thinking of it as a grid. So I've got rows and columns and I basically just kind of create a size and I go through this. I'm going to set every single one of those objects in my grid, one of those locations, let's call it, to zero to start with. Then I'm going to take the outside corners and set them to a random number divided by whatever my multiplier might be. In this case, I'm just using one to keep it simple. And so I'm going to take uh, that random value. And then I'm going to basically go through, loop through, and look through all of my pixels and do these steps, the diamond step and the square step, over and over and over and over again until every single pixel has a value. And so then I have the diamond step and the square step, and they're calling a diamond method and a square method, which you can find down below, that actually do the calculation. And again, it's influenced, each, each uh, pixel value of 0 to 1 is influenced by the pixels around it. Okay, And that's how you end up with um, not the white noise look, but actually kind of a terrain type of a look, a procedural looking uh, noise. Okay, And so that is the diamond uh, method and the square method here. But at the end of this um, diamond square method that I have, I'm taking my random values. So after I've looped through the entire thing and everything now has a value between zero and one, I need to convert that over into RGB space of zero to 255 to use the raw texture. And so that's what's happening here, okay? And so I basically go now convert it and then I output an array, a grid, for lack of a better word, of data. Specifically, it's an eight bit array, okay? And it is going to be then passed to uh, this noise array variable. And now here's where the awesome part comes in. I absolutely love this. Here, I'm going to create a raw texture and I'm going to pass in the data and the resolution. 
And that is going to give me an actual texture of the zero to one values or zero to 255 values that I created. How awesome is that? Okay, now I'm going to load in three different objects. There's the side of the cube, the top surface of the cube, and then a third one for the water. Now check this out. Let's look at the top surface first. I'm going to load in the object and then I'm going to create a new node material and I'm going to, excuse me, I'm going to load a node material from this snippet, which was done in the node material editor. I'm going to label it uh, surface material, give it a name of surface, surface material. And then this is really, really cool. I'm going to look through the node material for a node called texture. And I'm going to then say the input for that texture node is going to be set to the raw texture that we created with our random values, our influenced random values. And so now the texture that's inside the node material actually is the texture that we, the raw texture that we created. I absolutely love it. So what does that look like? Let's open up the inspector, open up materials and look for surface material, okay? And we're gonna go to the bottom click on this node material editor button and that will load up the node material editor for uh, the material that's assigned to that top surface. And let me just expand this out so we can see this. And here it is. And check this out. There you go. There's the noise. In fact, you can even see the little river part that's carved in in uh, the cube right there. And so that is the procedural noise, the texture, excuse me, the raw texture that we created. And then it's pretty simple. Basically what we do is we pass it all the way through to the Y value of this particular object, of this mesh. And so I'm saying, hey, I want the Y value of some of the vertices, not all of them, some of the vertices to be set uh, based on the value of zero to one in this texture here. How cool is that? Okay, so there's a couple of extra things that you should know about. I mentioned that we're going to take some of the vertices and influence them, but not all of them. And that is something, I'm basically creating a mask of which ones to affect and which ones not to affect by using vertex color. So let's just look at the side cube, even though we're looking at the node material for the top, the side essentially uses the exact same thing. What, I'm, what I've done is I've taken the side and I've said, hey, all of the vertices along the top edge, you're all gonna have a vertex color of white. So you're all gonna have a value for the R, G, and B channels of the vertex color of one. And then along the bottom edge of the cube, I'm gonna color each one of those vertices black. And so the RGB values for the vertex color for that, uh, that edge, those edges, excuse me, is zero. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm saying, I've got this step node. So we're gonna go through all of the vertices and I'm gonna say, okay, hey, if the vertex color, the red channel value, is above 0.5, this step node will output a one. And if it is below 0.5, it's gonna output a zero. And then I use this as a multiplier against a remap node. So the remap node basically is saying, hey, this texture goes from zero to one. So the, it, the difference between the highest and the lowest points is about like this. I'm saying instead make it negative two to two. So I'm basically just kind of stretching out the values a little bit, okay? And the effect of that is only going to be applied to any vertice, vertex that has a color of white. And again, those are only the top edge. And so that the vertex color then functions basically as a mask. And that's what gets piped through over through our lighting calculation here, and then finally into our fragment output, okay? So then finally, I have the color on the top, and that's entirely done with a gradient. Basically, I take that texture of zero to one, and I map that to some color on this gradient between zero here and one here. In fact, you can actually see zero is this dark blue color all the way through to one, well, actually it starts at 0.92 in this case, uh, of white. And so that's what gives us this. So based on the height coming from this texture, I'm going to color that uh, the, the top surface based on this. And so that's how I end up with the different colors based on the height. So the height and the color are basically driven by the exact same raw texture. How cool is that? I absolutely love it. And so essentially that is the node material that's driving it. So what do we do there? So we created 
random noise. Then we made a raw texture out of that. We passed that into the texture node in this node material. And then we use that to drive the height of some of the vertices and the color of all of them. Uh, and so, excuse me, the color of the uh, UVs on top, basically. And so uh, the base color. And so that gets uh, put out to the fragment output. And that's what creates this. And so that's the top surface. The side cube is actually very, very similar. It just doesn't have the color um, uh, of these different terrain parts. It's just basically a gradient from brown to a slightly darker brown. And then the only difference here with the water is that it's a very, very similar thing as a slightly different color. But instead, I've reversed the vertex color. So if you look closely at the water here, instead of influencing the top edge with the noise, I'm influencing the bottom edge with the noise. And so the top edge is actually vertex color black, so it has value zero, and the bottom edge has a vertex color of white or a value of one. And that is how we create procedurally generated terrain cubes using the raw texture. And so I also finally have this GUI button down here so I can simply create over and over again all these awesome looking terrains. And man, that is super, super fun to look at. Super fun to check out. The raw texture is incredibly powerful. I encourage you to check that out. And if you're into procedural noise, check out that diamond square algorithm. It's pretty powerful and not the worst thing in the world to try and figure out how to do. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video and it's been helpful in some way. Check out the description down below for a link to uh, the playground here with the terrain cube and also a Wikipedia article on that diamond square algorithm. Thanks so much for checking out this video. If you haven't already had a chance to do so, please consider subscribing to this channel so you don't miss any future updates. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.